For those Tesla fans out there, Tesla has introduced a technology that it calls autopilot, effectively the ability for the vehicle to drive itself on numerous roads. And while it certainly is an awesome technology, the name autopilot is not something that's unique to Tesla or was even first used by Tesla. In fact, the name autopilot was first used in 1958 on the Chrysler and Imperial lineups to denote what Chrysler introduced at the time as effectively its cruise control, but it really was even more than a cruise control. The autopilot system that was introduced on the Chrysler and Imperial lineups for 1958 wasn't actually invented by Chrysler. In fact, it was invented by a blind engineer, yes, a blind engineer, by the name of Ralph Teeter. Teeter was kind of a serial engineer and entrepreneur. Before he invented cruise control in 1950, he invented a fluid-operated gear shift that he sold to Bendix in the 1920s. And when he invented the cruise control in 1950, he was successful in selling it, like I said, to Chrysler, but later to other companies after he formed a company by the name of Perfect Circle. Perfect Circle was subsequently sold to Dana Corporation in 1963, which owned it for many years until, I believe, it was acquired by a German company, Mali, in 2007. When Teeter first introduced his product, he actually called it Speedostat. And there were some other names that were associated with that, but the patent was actually issued under the Speedostat name. He also called his so-called cruise control Control-O-Matic, Touch-O-Matic, and I believe even Press-O-Matic. But like I said, Speedostat was the name he used. Chrysler rebranded it Autopilot as an option in 1958, and it was actually General Motors that was ended up calling it cruise control when Cadillac introduced the technology shortly thereafter. But all of these early cruise control devices were really Teeter's design and made by Perfect Circle, as I previously mentioned. On these early units, the cruise control was operated by a bi-directional screw drive electric motor. Later ones would use a vacuum-based setup, but the early ones were actually an electric motor and there was effectively a 12-volt electrical post that would stay centered between two different electrical contacts, one of which would engage the motor screw for more throttle and the other for less. And as that post toggled back and forth, it would effectively move the throttle back and forth and allow you to maintain speed. Let's take a look at this perfect circle setup with the cover off and see how it works. You can see here that 12-volt post rocking back and forth between the two different connections for increasing and decreasing throttle. And on the left there, you have the weights that would effectively help govern the speed along with the dial that was on the dashboard. So pretty ingenious setup overall. Now let's take a look at some of Chrysler's original marketing materials for the autopilot. And here's where you get to see some of the magic behind the autopilot and why it's different from modern cruise controls. First of all, Notice the top left box there, it says control your speed. And then next to that, it says set the dial. So there was a dial in between the speedometer and the gauges that you would rotate to set your speed. And this was pretty typical of the era. GM had a so-called dial a cruise where on the Cadillacs, as an example, you would rotate a dial to a pre-specified speed and then you would push the button to engage the cruise control. This was very similar on the Chryslers. And obviously, as I said, the Chrysler came first. So you'd set the dial and then you would set the speed, you basically just push the button there in the middle of the dial to activate the autopilot. Now, it would hold your speed, as it mentions there, uphill, downhill, with your foot off the accelerator, and you could also disengage it by simply hitting the brake pedal, which you could do on modern cruise controls, and then you could reset it. So there was no switch at the end of the turn signal stock on these and you really had to make sure that you set the speed with the dial first. So that was a major difference versus modern cruise controls. It was setting this dial and that dial would effectively work against the counterweights that were in the mechanism to help control the speed setting. This was again before the vacuum-based cruise control was introduced. Now, the cool thing about Autopilot was that it wasn't just cruise control, but it had a built-in, I'll call it a speed alert as well. So when you pass the speed that was set on the dial, the accelerator pedal would actually give you feedback. It would become harder to press, signaling to you that you would approach the speed that you had set. And this is something that modern cruise controls don't do, but maybe they should. It's kind of a handy feature that 
you basically knew when you were approaching the maximum speed that you wanted to reach. And you could override this, as the brochure mentions, by just simply pushing harder on the accelerator, but at least you had some feedback to go by, signaling you that you were passing a speed that you didn't necessarily want to. Now, once various companies transitioned to the vacuum-based cruise control, there no longer was this pedal feedback that the driver then could use to understand that he or she was driving over the desired speed. And a lot of vehicles started incorporating what was called speed alert systems. And this was effectively a buzzer in the speedometer with a separate dial that you would set. And once the speedometer needle crossed the speed control needle that was set by the driver, often a buzzer would sound, and it was a horrible sounding buzzer, just kind of a especially on the General Motors vehicles, kind of similar to the key buzzer. And that was how they incorporated the speed alert. So as opposed to getting the pedal feedback, you'd hear this audible noise. And I think that's far worse than the pedal feedback, especially I can't even replicate that noise effectively, but it's just awful. And unfortunately, I don't think I have any vehicles right now with speed control, though I have had some in the past, including my 1970 Electra. And I don't know if I would have paid money for it because it made such an awful noise, but oh well. In any case, this autopilot setup on the Chryslers was super cool. And as I said, Chrysler introduced it first on the 1958 Chrysler Imperials, but other auto manufacturers introduced the same setup. And then the industry really transitioned to a more vacuum-based system as years went on. But this helped reinforce Chrysler's position in the industry as the engineering company that introduced everything from this cruise control to swivel seats to the alternator to four-wheel anti-lock brakes, to electronic distributors, to integrated child seats and automatic overdrive. So Chrysler had a great reputation for innovation during this time, and introducing this autopilot system just further cemented that. And beyond that, the 1958 Chryslers are certainly cool vehicles that were designed by Virgil Exner in some of his final years as the designer-in-chief at Chrysler, before he would be canned after the 1962 Plymouth and Dodge lineup absolutely bombed in the marketplace and would be replaced by Elwood Engel from Ford, who was largely responsible for the 1961 Continental. In any case, these 58 Chryslers are great vehicles. The last year for the Hemi head, the old school Hemi head Chrysler engines under hood as well, before they'd go to the wedge engine in 1959. So if you find one, pick one up. And if it's got autopilot, all the better. Thanks again for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.